I'm just guessing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> pucker to it, really nice and tart, but sweet. Is that your yum yummy dance? <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. I love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. Hey guys. We are back today with a little sweet treat, something I love that Naomi cooks every spring and lucky for us. It's beautiful and sunny and starting to be springtime. Yes, definitely. The weather in San Diego has been amazing this weekend and it's getting us really excited for the warmer months. And this is a treat I like to make around springtime because it's citrusy and light, but sweet and really tasty. So today we are making a classic key lime pie. And then we're also going to attempt to make a mandarin lime coconut pie. I think the second one sounds really intriguing to me. It sounds super tropical and citrusy and just like a vacation and all I want to do right now <laughs> is go on vacation in general. Let's get started. Beautiful. For a key lime pie and part of the reason why I love it so much is because it's so easy. There's barely any ingredients and the process is super simple. So we are making a cookie crust for it. Typically, you would make it with graham crackers, regular or gluten-free, obviously. However, it's also Passover right now, and Camille and I live in a household of Jewish roommates. So they're all following Passover kosher, and so we found cookies that don't include any oats, any yeast, or any wheat. Okay, so we are going to start by grinding up two kinds of cookies. I'm gonna use these for the tangerine lime pie, and then I'll use classic um, gluten-free graham crackers that I found for the key lime pie. For a traditional graham cracker or cookie crust, you will want some sort of crunchy cookie. I found these at Sprouts and I've never had them before, but I know they're going to be the consistency I want. Let's taste them for flavor. <laughs> Tastes good. A little softer than I'd want, but they're gonna work. Nice flavor though. I feel like it's got a nice vanilla wafer flavor, just a mm -hmm. little less crispy than the originals. I do, I do like the flavor in it a lot. I think if they were like dried out a little more, mm -hmm. they'd be even better. So maybe stale, <laughs> they'd be better. Um, but uh, the great thing about a crust like this is it's pretty flexible. Like you can use sandwich cookies if you want. Any kind of kind of crunchy cookie will work. Um, and obviously it doesn't have to be gluten free. This is kind of a concept I've created in my brain and I've never made it before or anything like it. Um, what I want to do is toast some of this coconut and then put that also with the cookies in the food processor and make it kind of a toasted coconut vanilla cookie crust to add some tropical flavors to it. I just have some like shredded, shredded coconut chips. Ooh, so yummy. Mm. I don't think I am going to toast this coconut. After tasting it, I don't think it's necessary because we are baking the crust for about 20 minutes in total, and therefore all the ingredients will get baked and heated and toasty as well. So my aim is to have one and a half cups of crumb between the cookie and the coconut for our crust mixture. So I'm gonna kinda eyeball it and we'll go from there. Um, everything is going in the food processor now to be made into crumbs. So my food processor did all the work and made these beautiful coconut and vanilla cookie crumbs for me. 
You don't want it to be complete powder, but a very small kind of sandy crumb is perfect. We have one and a half cups of the crumb mixture and Camille is going to melt six tablespoons of butter for us to uh, mix into the crumbs. And then the butter is what uh, makes it all hold together so you can press it into your uh, pie pan and make it a make it a crust that holds together. Just cutting it in little pieces and going to throw it in the microwave to get it melted. You want it totally melted? Yep. I am going to put these crust ingredients away and move on to our classic graham cracker crust for the key lime pie uh, so we can bake both at the same time. We were trying to go uh, kosher friendly for Passover without the oat. So I chose Char, which is another great gluten-free brand that has tons of different products that they make. Um, I've never tried their graham crackers, so we'll we'll see how they are. It, it doesn't really matter for this kind of thing. They taste like Ikea. <laughs> They're actually really, really tasty. Yeah. This <laughs> is a little salty. But yeah, like, like good. The box comes with three packages of six grams. Looks like these are going to crumble up really nicely in the food processor. So I'm starting with one whole package of grams. Minus a couple bites. Minus a couple <laughs> bites from Camille and I. They're really tasty. I really want to eat them with uh, buttercream frosting. I was gonna say mm -hmm. with frosting. Oh, so good. Shout out to mom. Yeah, shout out mom and our childhood of eating cold icing on graham crackers. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna process this and then we'll mix everything together at the same time. made one and a half cups exactly of crumbs. So that's pretty exciting. They're about the same consistency as the vanilla wafers and everything's looking good. So this is so easy, I love it. For a crumb pie crust, you pretty much make it the same no matter what cookie you're using. So we're using our one and a half cups of crumbs. Those are our vanilla coconut ones and I am going to use brown sugar to add to it. You're very welcome to use regular white sugar. I like the little bit of molasses that's in brown sugar, so it just adds a little bit more depth of flavor. Since these cookies have more sugar in them than a typical graham cracker, I'm using less additional sugar and going to add one quarter cup of packed brown sugar, and then six tablespoons of melted butter. Here's the crust mixture for the coconut vanilla crust, and super similar with the uh, regular graham cracker. The only difference I am doing here is using one third cup of sugar instead of a quarter cup. Same thing, six tablespoons of butter. Just mix it on up. to get crumbs, mix it together. If you can find graham cracker crumbs at the grocery store, even easier. All right, we have both our crust mixtures here, our coconut vanilla one, traditional graham cracker crust. Now we are going to press them into the pan. This is another reason I really love crumb crusts. It's just so easy. You don't have to worry about rolling out a crust and then having it break before you get it in your pan. So I used my hands a little bit to 
press it into the uh, to the pie pan. And then I'm using this cup measure and I'm gonna go around the edges and really press it in there. The cup helps you get into that corner of your pie pan and create a more flat bottom. Okay. Kind of just evening it out, making the top a little bit nice and smooth, whatever. Now it's a cookie again. We crumbled the cookie and made it into another cookie. I am going to do the same exact thing with our traditional crust. And then we will bake both of these crusts at 350 for about eight minutes to let them set on their own before we fill them with anything liquid um, and wet. While the crusts bake, this is the perfect opportunity to make the filling. I'm going to start with the mandarin lime filling. I'm going to zest a couple of these tangerines with my microplane and do two teaspoons of zest total. I think I'll split it in half and do one teaspoon tangerine zest and one teaspoon of lime zest. I'm relying on the lime to kind of bring that sour element to uh, combat the sweetness of the condensed milk we're going to use. When you're zesting, I watch a lot of people zest citrus and it kind of kills me inside because this white part right underneath the dark green part or the orange part or yellow part or whatever citrus you're, juice you're zesting is pith. And the pith is really bitter and not what you want. So you can see I'm kind of doing one stroke and then rotating it because all I want is that first top layer. And if you go like this to zest your fruit, like a lot of people do, then you're zesting not only that first layer, but a lot of the white pith underneath. And it really brings more, more bitter notes than, than you're gonna want. One teaspoon of the tangerine zest and the lime as well. Next, we are juicing the citrus. Two thirds cup of juice. Ooh, that's really pretty tangerine. This is really pretty. I am going to use some lime juice as well, not just the zest. So I'm aiming for mainly mandarin. So I'm aiming for half a cup of tangerine juice and then I'll do just a little bit of lime juice for that um, acidic tart element that we were talking about. Pie crusts are then. So these are the crusts out of the oven now. They don't look too different on camera. They got a little bit of brown at the edges and it looks nice and melted and cohesive. So we are gonna say they look perfect and they are gonna go in the oven again. This first baking round for the crust is to kind of set them and make sure that they start baking, but they bake for another 10 to 12 minutes or so while the filling bakes. So they'll get some color on them um, in our next round of baking. So I have that juice and zest going into one of our bowls here. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing with these little babies. Key lime. Key limes. This pie, obviously, traditionally, it is called key lime pie. However, there's a um, minimal amount of difference in the flavor between lime and key limes. And these can be hard to find sometimes. So go ahead and use regular lime if you'd like. It's totally fine, totally acceptable. I just bought them for the nostalgia. I did the whole bag of key limes. They're sold in a bag at the store, typically. I did the whole bag, as you can see, by my little lime carcasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have to use a couple regular limes as well. The key limes gave me half a cup of juice, but I'm going for two thirds cup. So 
with the help of literally just another two limes. We get to that two thirds mark. Each pie gets three egg yolks. So I like to separate my eggs by cracking them all into a bowl and then just pulling the yolk from it. Your fingers are really, you know, gentle and kind of helps you just pull the yolk right out of the white. Try to get the least amount of white as possible and then just stick the yolk into a separate bowl. So since we're doing, we're doing two pies with the same base, three egg yolks, one 14 ounce can of condensed milk, I decided I am just going to make the double mixture together and then I'll just put it in a measuring cup. Woo, run away. Very nice. <laughs> and then I'll just put it in a measuring cup, split it in half and put half for each pie. Easy. I have six egg yolks and I am going to use the hand mixer to make them light and fluffy and then I will add the cans of condensed milk, hand mix it a little bit longer to make it more light and fluffy and then we'll mix the juice in and pour it in the pie crust and we're done. juice in there and the zest as well and then we have the mandarin lime in here I want to make sure that my measure is as close to exact as possible so I'm gonna measure it before I pour it into the juice stir to combine <laughs> two absolutely beautiful pies here. They look so tasty and I'm really excited to try this tropical one. So we're gonna pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes, but we will check on them at that point to see if they're done. At 350. At 350. <laughs> Pies are done. They took exactly 10 minutes in my oven. I just jiggled the rack a little bit to see if they wiggle right in the center. You'll see kind of like a really liquidy center that waves like water if it is not done. But if the entire pie kind of just moves all together with a little bit of jiggle, <laughs> then, <laughs> then it's done. It will continue to set as it cools. We are going to let these sit here for an hour or so to let them cool and come back and check on them in a little bit. Yay. Well, we finished the pies. And just to prove Naomi is a human too, we put our mess ups in the front so you guys can see them. <laughs> yeah. We were able to get some really nice slices out of it. I just had to use an offset spatula a cake, a cake slicer would work too. Something that has an offset angle so that you can get into it and under it. We tried to use a knife and this was the result. 
But to be fair, they weren't refrigerated, they weren't frozen, they were just sitting at room temperature for an hour or so while we did some other stuff. I think if we had refrigerated them like we normally do with key lime pies, yeah. it would have been a much easier, smooth sailing. You know, trial and error. And we couldn't find this offset spatula guy, and we finally found him. And look at what came from him. He Beautiful. saved the day. I definitely think they will be better cold. And I might stick one of them in the freezer to see how that tastes too, eating it frozen. Um, I love frozen key lime pie. Yeah, I've, I, like I've never had it frozen before. That's I always it. just eat it refrigerated. Well, let's um, try the ugly one so we can feed our roommates the pretty one. Oh, good idea. Here, I got you a fork. Oh, thank you. All right, let's try the key lime. Also, Naomi whipped up some whipped cream. I did. We'll put that just on. made some simple whipped cream. I don't think we'll need it for the mandarin one because it's a little sweeter, but it's so good with key lime pie. Mmm. Mmm. Freaking delicious. Perfect amount of just like tart. I think from the berry video too, we talked about having a good balance of like that tart, a little bit sour kind of flavor mixing with the butter and the sugar oh. really makes it feel really balanced. Totally, you better hurry up. I mean, okay, I know, I can tell. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to speak to our friends. And I'm you're busy with a pie. I think that's gonna be our favorite, but Let's try this, maybe with a little cream. This one's fun because it's an experiment. I'm excited to try it. Yeah. I've never tried something like this Make before. sure to get the crust. I'm gonna get a good crust piece. That's tasty. No, I really like that too, but what I was saying about the other one, oh, it's a really nice balance of the tart and sweet. This one is more just sweet, but I think Laton mm -hmm. is actually gonna like this one more. I think. This one is definitely more sweet forward. There's back notes of the mandarin and the lime. Mm. I think it could almost be stronger mandarin flavor. I just got a little bit of zest in that bite and it tasted more strong citrusy. Mm. And then the crust is really good and buttery. I can taste the texture of the coconut as you chew the, the crust. Oh, the I can taste the difference between the cookie and the coconut mm. and it adds a nice little bite in there. I think it's mm. good. I think the next time I were to attempt something like this, I might do it a little bit differently, but that crust almost could just go with key lime pie. Totally. It has a little more like fatty, sweet flavor to it, and then, and then it would go really well with the, with the lime. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Camille and I are gonna sit here and eat the rest of these pie fails, mm -hmm. and then feed the pretty stuff to our roommates. Let's say goodbye so we can let our roommates try it. And eat the rest of the pie. And so that we can turn this off, yeah. We had a super great time filming today yeah. and trying out a new recipe, doing an old classic favorite that I know and love. And I hope that you had fun watching it and are inspired to make your own citrus pie or a classic key lime pie. Let us know what citrus you would use. Grapefruit would be really good. Oh. Lemon would be really good. Anything sour would be a great base yeah. for this pie. So really easy concept. I'd love to know how you'd do it. Yeah, let us know also if there's any desserts that really stand out to you as springtime, summertime, yeah. get us excited. We had a couple ideas just while we were filming, even off camera, of other desserts we wanna try this spring and summer. And we would love to hear if you have any recommendations as well. Thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for hanging out. We'll, we'll see, see you next, next week. time. Bye. Bye.